Hey, what's going on guys? It's Josh. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to properly install uh, a zone system for a two-story house with just one system on it. Okay, we're going to be installing a Honeywell brand zone board. Uh, that's what we usually put on all of our equipment. Done the EMC stuff too, and I like those, but the Honeywells are very easy. Um, this is our zone system we're working with. Um, it's got one, two, three, four dampers. There's one in the back. Um, and then this right here is your bypass damper. You always want to make sure that that's uh, locked in place correctly. And always adjust it if you can see the mark there about halfway. That's usually about where you want it. Um, and like I said, these are our dampers. They have the uh, thermostat wire attached to one of the dampers to show which damper is which. Um, this one is going to be a downstairs. And there'll be one more of these. This is a downstairs. And the one in the back has a thermostat wire tied to it. It's for the upstairs. And one of these will be the upstairs as well. You just got to look, figure out by um, where the ducts are going. This one right here, they're branching off to the ups for the upstairs. And so our other upstairs one is going to be the top one. So downstairs downstairs upstairs and the one in the back is the upstairs so let me uh, get the camera set up and the first step is finding the right location for your zone board and real quick before i get started just showing you what's what you can expect in the box this is the transformer for the zone board this is the wireless air temperature sensor to uh, let you know what the temperature is uh, going across the coil and then your zone board all right, and this is our zone board. It's the Honeywell, like I said. Um, take the cover off of it here. It's set up for three zones. We're only gonna be using two. So your thermostats will go into each one of those. Uh, where it says zone one damper, that will go to the damper and then you can just uh, loop the other dampers in. That's uh, so That way you're not bringing all of your wires back to your zone board. And when finding a location, you always want to make it convenient and also make it look pretty tidy. Uh, taking your wires back to the furnace, there'll be one that goes inside to the board in there. Um, so, mounting it right there looks pretty good to me. Close to the furnace, close to the dampers. So, I'll get that mounted up and we'll show what's going on next. All right, so got the zone board in place. It's uh, pretty close to where all your zones are and the furnace. On this side, we'll, we'll run our thermostat wire for the equipment. It's gonna go back. We'll make it nice, look, look neat with the other wire, go into the cabinet, put it uh, into the furnace. And we'll start with our first zone that we will do. And that's the, this one is, as you can see, going straight down into the floor, going for the downstairs. So this one is gonna be the downstairs. We'll do that as zone number one. All right, so we're gonna put in our our two wires for to control our two zones for the uh, up the downstairs. I'm gonna take it around, and as you can see, I've got both of my dampers for downstairs looped, and this will be the power wire that I have hooked up to zone one to come over here, and I'll be putting these in. once you think you got it just make sure by giving it a good pull make sure everything looks good all right so we got our whole down, downstairs is completed it's got the loop both of our both of our zones here are set up under zone two powered by this wire right here that goes back to this damper and we'll be doing the next one which will be the upstairs zone zone number one and that's going to be this zone and the one back there, which I'm not, you know, gonna be able to film very well because I'm not uh, equipped with the GoPros and all that stuff. I'm just trying, really trying to help some guys out. So um, that is where my wire is. I'll bring it over, tie it in right here, and run my 
two wire. My first two wire is gonna go back there to the one in the back that's hard to get to. It'll go into here. And then I will bring my power two wire from here also, cause it is closer and tie it in to power up both of those zones. Okay, so I got zone one hooked up here and I've got the harder one done. Um, there's the zone that I'm gonna pull off of with my power. Got my light and I'll show you. There's my other zone back here. So I ain't gotta worry about that one no more. It's tied in. I threw it over the duck and it's tied in right there. So I'm gonna come off this one with another two wire, which will power up those two and put it right there, okay? So I'll be done in just a second and I will show you. All right, so I'm all done. Got all my zones wired. You know, if we started this video right into right here, you would be like, what in the world are all of these wires going to? But breaking it down like that, I really hope it did help. Um, got a little bit more to show you in this video. And, and I also, you know, I like to take pride in what I do. And you look at this big mess of wires, it just looks so sloppy. Um, there is very easy ways. I found much better than using tape. I'll cut um, little pieces of two wire and let me see if we can just make a couple alterations here bring that wire together we got this one bring that together and what you'll do is just get your wire and just that one wire can make such a huge difference uh wrapping it around can make such a huge difference in how tidy everything looks um you know, I might could do a couple more up here, but not gonna worry about it too much. It's mainly about the looks right in here that you're gonna be looking at. And then once we finish uh, bringing off our stuff from our equipment side down into the furnace, that one is important to get, you know, looking pretty nice too. So I am gonna open up the furnace and then we will show you the inside and hooking up from there. Okay, so we got our wire attached to the equipment side. Um, R, W, Y, and G. And if you notice on Honeywell, for some reason, you don't hook up a C wire because it has RH and RC with a jumper. Um, not really sure why they do that, but just so you know, in case you get to that point, you're like, hey, I have C, but I don't have nowhere to put it. Just wrap it around like I did and you'll be fine. Um, I'll get all this put up against the line set later. But right now I'm going in here to show you. And of course we're gonna use at least, you always wanna use at least one type of switch. So we got a, float, a pan switch, uh, which is in here. Our red wire we'll use to break that pan switch. The other side is gonna go into the board. And then everything else, if you uh, even are nov uh, novice at heating and air, you understand what, what do you have to do from here. It's just um, tying it in just like you would any other system. And most of the time, it besides C, which is uh, the blue wire, it's all by color. So, And here it is once it's done. Um, everyone knows what it looks like, um, unless you're, first, like I said, first time watching it. But it is the G terminal for your fan. We got Y, where your two wire from your outdoor unit is going to tie in, and your yellow wire from the equipment. Then we have W, which is your heat wire, C, which is your ground, and then R, which is the one side of your safety switch. The other side is broke by your actual power wire. So if anything ever happens to this float switch, pulls up, cuts the cuts it, and gets no power to the board after that. So. We have the equipment wired up now. All that's left to do is run our 24 volts, which goes right here. 24 volts is what our transformer is gonna go for, is for, I mean, and we're gonna take it and set it right in here. This is inside the main, the, the top cabinet where your burners are. We're gonna set the transformer right back there and tie in where our power is right here. So when I, come back on I have the transformer in place and we'll tie in the transformer all right okay so you always want to strip your uh, wires for your transformer pretty far and uh, 
the reason is this is the type of transformer that it just goes around the terminal so twist them around and then you can have it uh, you can have it ready for your transformer okay transformer looks like this it has a R and a C on it and this one does matter you want to make sure your R is on the R terminal so we'll hook them around and tighten them all up and then I'll show you once I have it set up inside the cabinet which is right here we're gonna have it back in there and then we'll tie into the low voltage all right and as you can see I have the transformer sit where it's going to um, always make sure that the terminal where your wires are screwed and connected isn't touching any metal and know exactly where you want it then tap you a screw down into the bottom of it to keep it in place and now we'll go into the um, the electrical box here where they have it it'll just be wire nut and always make sure your power's off first for sure don't take chances um, so we got your black and we got your white wire so we'll take the black and the white wire off our transformer because it's 120 volts. If you was dealing with an air handler, it would be 240 and you would use the black and orange for 240, but this one is just uh, 120. So we're gonna go black and orange and white will go to white, black will go to black, and I'll be right back. All right, and there it is. I tucked them back away in here. Got the white and black wire attached. And the orange wire that we don't use, make sure to cut it and put your wire nut on it just to make sure it doesn't hit anything uh, to cause any problems. And now we'll be uh, running our power 24 volt wire, running it up to our board. It's just that and the air temperature sensor left and we'll be done. Okay, so got the power wire ran up, got it attached and going across, try to make everything look as neat as possible. Um, back around to right here, which is where our power wire will go, R and C. And like I said, this is the one that you do want to make sure is right. So our R wire is going to go in. And if you was wondering, I know I hadn't showed any of me put hooking them up, but it's just pretty much you just push them in and they lock or you could push on these as you push in and it's not half as hard to push, but um, I've just gotten used to that to doing that. So all that's left now is our uh, air sensor and I will show you that now. All right, so what I'll normally do is I'll stick my drill in, move around the insulation a little bit and this is a 932nd uh, drill bit for an impact um, it's the perfect size for the diameter of that air sensor. So we'll go in. And there, there's the hole for it. Okay, so you just, uh, you find where you want it and you it just slides right in, the probe does. And it comes with the two screws to mount it. And then you'll also have your two wires right here, which will connect to another two wire. I know so many wires, right? And we'll tie that end of these wires going across and it goes right there. So I'll get all that done and I will show you kick it on and uh, how to set everything up. All right, we're finally done. Got the uh, data sensor, the air sensor in. Got the two wire nuts on it and tidy it up a little more I'm telling you these things only take it only takes just a few seconds just to wrap that around there and it really uh, really makes it look nice and neat so we got our air sensor our data sensor in right here and with uh, like the dampers it doesn't matter red or white in either one of those the only one that matters again is R and C make sure whichever one you tie into R at the uh, transformer goes to R right here now we're gonna kick it on and I'll show you the setup process. Okay. We're gonna go hit, hit home one to go to configure. And right here is where you would go to heat pump. Very crucial that you make that step. If it is a heat pump, that way it knows it's got a reversing valve and needs to power it. If not, you run this with a heat pump set for conventional, which is what we have today. Um, it would run in heat all the time because it doesn't know there's a reversing valve to power. But that's another 
uh, video and other explanation. So configure, that's correct. Go to next. You just want one cooling stage, one heat stage. Nope. Go to two zones instead of three. No advanced configuration. Actually, yes, on these honey wells, go to advanced configuration just to get to the um, about the sensor. Discharge sensor, yes. High is fine. The data low limit. You don't want this thing. Go I mean, if it if it hits 40 degrees, it's not the end of the world. It's not freezing up. So I like to take it to 35 because you know there is cooler days when you're running AC and your AC might hit 40 degrees. It doesn't happen often, but it could and it could still be fine. So let's run it down to where it, where it could be potentially starting to freeze or getting ready to freeze. 35 is a much safer number to be at because it can hit 40 sometimes and it's a wasted surface call. So 35 on there, which still isn't freezing, but it's better than 40, okay? Because if you're getting down to 35, you're too low to be running pretty much anyway. So let's keep it right there. And that's the only reason you want to go to advanced settings. Always make sure you save. Go ahead and purge it override it already has your it'll always have your uh air temperature right here and our stuff is ready to go just have all you have to do now is set up your thermostats which we're not gonna uh do because everyone has different thermostats um but most of the time for conventional stuff uh you don't have to set nothing up all right guys so that in a nutshell is um a zone board and how to wire in dampers and uh, you know your transformer, the whole the whole shebang. Um, I know that uh, zone boards can be very intimidating. They was for me. Um, they are for anybody beginning um, when they see all those wires. And there's like there's no way I could figure this out. But if you look at it in different steps, and you look, uh, you try to you try to take at least what I showed you too into consideration, and just do one thing at a time. Take your first zone. Do all of that be done with it go to the next one you know and there's different ways you can do it to really make it easier on you after you've done one two at the most you got you know there is no more questions you got it so uh just keep at it. if you have any comments you see anything uh you want to tell me that i did wrong go ahead feel free we're here to learn and uh help each other so until next time guys i really hope you enjoyed this one